guys in this video we want to look at the pathogenesis of uh, influenza virus then we want to look at the host immunity right um, if possible we want to look at the lab diagnosis and the profile axis correct so so far what we have seen just take a quick recap we saw how influenza is a pandemic and it kills lakhs of people annually clinical features uh, upper respiratory tract problems there could be some complications the treatment for influenza is oseltamivir or tamiflu it is called okay there is flu vaccine for uh, influenza don't confuse with the hiv vaccine hiv vaccine is for haemophilus influenza that is a bacteria that does not cause influenza at all influenza is actually caused by a virus okay influenza virus Haemophilus influenza is a bacteria which was incorrectly named as the influenza bacteria. It does not cause influenza, and uh, that's a bacteria. So don't confuse with the HIV vaccine. That is for bacteria that causes meningitis. Okay. Now moving on. Influenza virus. We saw that it is an RNA virus. It is a mixo virus. It's an ortho mixo virus. It has eight segments of single stranded RNA, and uh, there are a lot of. Uh, <clears throat> we saw the differences between ortho mixo viruses and para mixo viruses. Then, we saw the proteins. There are so many proteins. There are structural proteins and non-structural proteins. Structural proteins. There are eight structural proteins. Right, you have the PB one, PB two, PA. Then you have the NP, that is the RNP, ribonucleoprotein. Then you have the matrix proteins M one, M two. You have the heme agglutinin and the neuraminidase uh, protein HA and NA. Then you have the non-structural proteins like the NS one and the NS two. Okay. Then the envelope to envelope HA and NA are bound. We saw in this diagram how to the envelope HA and NA are bound. This uh, purple color circle that is the M1, that is the shell, and uh, M2 is the ion channel, matrix proteins they are. This blue circle is actually the envelope. So draw this diagram for getting marks uh, in uh, influenza morphology. In fact, any question about influenza, if you draw this diagram, you will get marks because that shows you have understood the structure, the antigens, etc. Then we saw the segments of RNA. What they do? We saw that the seventh segment codes for M1 and M2. Similarly, lot of uh, uh, segments code for lot of other segments code for other things. Not going into the details. Then we saw the antigenic subtypes. Uh, know that first of all, there is influenza A, B, C based on the RNP and the M protein. Based on the HA and NA, that is the surface antigens. You have um, in influenza A you have sixteen H subtypes, and in N you have nine subtypes. So you have H one to H sixteen and N one to N nine. For human importance, you have H one, H two, H three, H five, and N one and N two. Now let's move on, guys. Uh, we saw antigenic variation. So if uh, there is point mutation, there is antigenic drift. Okay. And if there is genetic reassortment, it becomes antigenic shift. So antigenic drift is a minor change. It occurs every two to three years, and it causes minor epidemics. So the virus uh, can escape the host's immune. Remember. Now in this case, what happens in antigenic shift? Basically, there is genetic reassortment. New strain of virus is coming because of two or more viruses coming together and uh, you know arranging their uh, genetic content. to form a new strain of virus itself okay so there will be discontinuous variation in the surface proteins this is a major change and it can result in pandemics or major epidemics example in 2009 2010 there was swine flu h1n1 this antigenic shift occurs every 10 to 20 years <coughs> now let us look at the pathogenesis so from here uh, whatever you going to see is new content correct you have seen whatever you have seen so far is just, was just a revision So now let us look at uh, the pathogenesis. So what happens? The virus 
it uh, how does the virus enter by cough the or by cough or by sneeze so basically by aerosols and also by contact the virus can reach us okay and even by fomites what is fomite like handkerchief etc so <coughs> the transmission is by these three now what happens the target cell entry now the virus comes and the target cell it has to enter the target cell how does it enter the hemagglutinin right hemagglutinin antigen it attaches to the specific receptor that is the sialic acid receptor so you should mention all these words sialic acid receptors it will attach to the sialic acid receptor and now what happens um, uh, the cell gets uh, will allow the entry of this virus now here especially what cells are affected the ciliated columnar epithelium like the respiratory epithelium correct and uh, this is the most infected the alveolar cells also that means even the lower uh, respiratory uh, tract right lower respiratory system also is affected the mucus glands are affected alveolar macro macrophages are also affected so mostly the upper respiratory tract even the alveolar cells that is the lower respiratory tract can get affected so what happens now after the entry these things are going to multiply once they multiply a uh, lot of uh, new viruses are formed which are going to go and infect the other cells now multiply locally means and the rna replication in you know in influenza virus or in ortho mixo virus the rna replication occurs inside the nucleus this is the difference about um, uh, ortho mixo virus is the rna replication occurs inside the nucleus so <clears throat> you know that all those proteins which you saw pb1 pb2 pa etc those are going to help in the transcription and replication of rna we have already read that can we go back to that slide and check the proteins this one right see pb1 pb2 pa they help in rna transcription and replication i think if you put pa first it will be interesting pa then pb p in pb you have pb1 and pb2 they help in rna transcription and replication okay you hope you remember this in viral proteins we have already seen structural proteins there are eight structural proteins in that you have pa pb1 pb2 let's go back now to where we were so we were looking at pathogenesis <clears throat> in which we saw uh, we have we have been seeing the multiplication of the virus locally now the virus replicates inside these infected cells and then the virus will reform itself you know it will generate its uh, it will multiply uh, it will make copies of its rna and then the rna will synthesize proteins these proteins are the viral proteins they help and again they restructure and form new virus and these new virus exit this infected cell and spread to other cells now coming to spread rarely it spreads they are saying Uh, to lower uh, respiratory tract which we have already seen alveolar cells and alveolar macrophages etc it can also enter the blood stream and hence reach extra pulmonary sites like we saw the ray syndrome ray syndrome is what the fatty degeneration of liver and touch the brain and say encephalopathy ray ray syndrome now there is local damage what happens in the local uh, uh, area there is cellular destruction desquamation edema mononuclear cell infiltration and cytokine influx standard stuff that you can write for any infection cytokines will come cellular destruction will happen uh, mononuclear cell infiltration that means uh, um, macrophages right monocytes or macrophages will come then this is followed by a secondary bacterial invasion you have seen like in uh, pneumonia can be caused because of staph or staphylococci staphylococci or staphylococci then pneumococci and uh, haemophilus influenzae correct so because of all these there can be secondary bacterial invasion in pathogenesis just write about uh, ray's syndrome okay write about the clinical features also this is extra pulmonary correct ray syndrome then what else you saw other than pneumonia you saw other pulmonary complications like uh, copd right copd then you saw exacerbation of chronic bronchitis and asthma exacerbation of chronic bronchitis and asthma so all these will you can write in pathogenesis you can include of some uh, 
clinical features also. So just make it more bulky. So let's move on now to the influenza host immunity. So we are now moving on guys to the host immunity. Let us try to cover the host immunity at least in this video. So basically innate immunity we have that is by birth we have some um, things that can help us to defeat the virus. We have the natural killer cells and the interferons. Interferons are here. And then you have humoral immunity as usual you have antibodies which we make against these antigens that is the heme agglutinin antigen and the new uh, new what is that yes the heme agglutinin and the new amimidase uh, you have okay so against these uh, the antibodies are formed so what happens is uh, these antibodies they inhibit the viral entry and they also decrease the severity of the disease they prevent transmission of the disease to the contacts okay so we are able to fight the virus by making antibodies so we are trying to fight which virus guys we are trying to fight the influenza virus so hope you are understanding we are trying to fight the influenza virus we have finished innate immunity that is natural killer cells and interferons then we looked at antibodies against the ha and the na then we saw what these antibodies do they inhibit the viral entry and they also decrease the severity of the disease and also they prevent the transmission of the disease to the contacts. Now let us move on to uh, uh, other features of this humoral immunity. There is no cross protection. So if you have antibodies you have made against influenza A, it is not going to help you against influenza B uh, genome. Correct? So there is no cross protection. There. These um, uh, viruses and influenza A, B, C, they are antigenically unrelated bad for us. Okay? Then coming to something called as original antigenic sin. There is a term here called original antigenic sin. Just make sure that you are able to understand this term. Original antigenic sin means if you are um, having... So just look at this term original antigenic sin. Okay, sin, sin. It is a sin. So basically what happens here, you were first infected with one uh, subtype Okay, and then the second time you got a repeated uh, infection of influenza, but a different subtype. Our body will make antibodies for both the original um, uh, subtype and the new subtype. But the problem is our body makes more antibodies against the original subtype. So that is called as original antigenic sin. It is seen in influenza virus. Influenza. Influenza. Virus. Virus. Original. Original antigenic, antigenic sin, sin in influenza. influenza. Thank you. Now, humoral immunity we have finished. Now, let us move on to cell mediated or uh, immunity. Here, there are cytotoxic T cells, that is the CD8 plus CD8 positive uh, T cells. They are cytotoxic T cells. They help in fighting the influenza virus. What else you can write about fighting this? See, initially it is asymptomatic or usually it is asymptomatic. Clinical features, it is usually asymptomatic. Sometimes it can just appear like a common cold. But then what can happen? The fever, uh, etc. can increase and then there can be pneumonia, those complications. Pneumonia and other pulmonary complications like COPD, exacerbation of chronic bronchitis and uh, asthma etc. And then also what we saw Ray syndrome. So just look at this. Okay, here you will have what? Cough, chills, headache, etc. Then high grade fever followed by myalgia, myalgia, anorexia, etc. Yeah, myalgia, anorexia, etc. So you cannot um, distinguish between common cold and uh, influenza. So our body can sell, you know, can help in self-limiting this uh, condition. Otherwise, you can give treatment. What is the treatment? Ocel tamivir, correct? Ocel tamivir. This one, ocel tamivir. So in this video, what and all we have covered, guys, we have finished the pathogenesis, right? We finished the pathogenesis, then we finished the immunity, host immunity. In the next video, we look at the lab diagnosis, profile access if possible, okay? Come back for the next video. Bye-bye.